Hi, boys and girls. I thought today what we create in innovation would be a winter card. To do that, we're going to go to scratch.mit.edu. The first thing you need to do is sign in. If you don't have a create an account, you can create an account but you do need to be signed in in order to share your card. So we're gonna click sign in and you can see I already have a username and a password. If I don't have a username and password, I could click join scratch and create a username and password. If you go and create a new username and password, you will have to confirm the email that you get sent when you put in your email to make sure everything is set up properly so you can share your card. If you forgot your username and password, you can click on need help and either put in your username or the email address you registered with, which could be your school email address. Then hit send me password reset link and you will get an email with your new password. So I'm gonna sign in And I'm going to click create. And here we have a new project. Now, the first thing I want to do is choose a background. So I'm gonna delete the cat because I'm not going to have the cat in my winter card. I'm gonna go over here where it says choose backdrops. It's far over here in the right hand corner and I'm gonna go up to the search tool and click search. Now I want a particular backdrop. I wanna look for a wintry scene, that's one, but I think I want one with trees. Oh, here's a good one. Now this backdrop is kinda of special. If I click on backdrops up here, I can see it has a blank one and it has a winter scene. I'm gonna delete the blank one because I don't need that. Then I have this winter scene. I can use the zoom in and zoom out to see a little bit more of it. And you'll notice down here, there's a button that says convert to bitmap. That means this is a very special background. It is what we call a vector graphic. And the reason that's important is because we can choose elements that are on the backdrop and copy them and put them somewhere else. So what I'm going to do first is copy these trees. So I'm gonna select the tree. I'm going to hit Control C or I press the copy button up here. And now I've copied the tree. Now I'm going to go to my sprites down here, I'm going to choose, instead of choosing a new sprite, I'm gonna hit the paintbrush to paint a new sprite. And I'm gonna press paste. And look, my tree from my backdrop is now a sprite, which means I can control it. Now I'm moving it so this little plus sign on the tree lines up with the plus sign that is in the middle of the sprite, because I always wanna make sure my sprite is right in the middle of my window. So now I'm gonna go back to my backdrops and I can click on this tree again and delete it. So now that tree's gone, but I have it as a separate sprite. Now these two trees are identical. There's no difference between them. I think one is just flipped the other way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one too. So there's no trees in the background. Now what I'm gonna do is click back on my code window and look at my sprite here and I'm going to duplicate it. So now I have two trees. Now you see how one's leaning left and one's leaning right? Well, I'm gonna click on sprite two, which is the tree over here, go to its costumes click on it, and then you see this button up here, it says flip horizontal. I'm gonna click flip horizontal. Oops, it looks like it blew apart. 
So because I copied it, I have to make sure I get the entire tree before I flip it. I'm going to use the arrow key, which is right here. See this arrow button? And I'm going to draw a box around it. Then I'm going to hit flip. And now I have the whole tree. So I have the first tree and I have the second tree just like I had in my winter scene, but I now have control of them. I can write code for them and make them do stuff. So now I'm also going to search for another sprite, a character for our little card. And I think I want to use, oh, let's see, goblin or an elf. I think an elf, there we go. But this elf looks tremendously large. So I want to change the size of the elf. Now I can do that two ways. I can do that right here where it says size, or I could do it in code. The advantage of doing it in code is that if I change the size later to make it look like it's moving, then when I hit the green flag, it will always start at the correct size. So we're gonna do it that way. So I'm going to go to control, actually events, which is this kind of yellowish thing. And I wanna find when green flag clicked, that's right there, events. And then I'm gonna to go to looks, which is the second one down here. And there's something that says change size by 10 and set size to 100%. So these two deal with changing the size. I wanna set the size, but I don't want it to be 100%. I want it to be, I think 50%. And let's see what that looks like. If I click the green flag, ah, that's better. My elf looks a little bit more in proportion to our trees. So I have two trees and an elf. I want to go in and edit my elf a little bit. So I'm going to click on my elf, go into my costumes, and you can see the elf has a couple different looks. This looks kind of like a normal look. We zoom in a little bit. And then this looks like a happy smiley look. And this looks like a smile with a wave. But my normal look kind of looks a little angry. So you'll notice, again, this is a vector graphic because I have this convert the bitmap button, which means I can change the mouth. Now, I can't select just the mouth right now because it looks like it's connected to the whole face. So what I want to do is click on the mouth and click this button up here that says un group and I may have to click it a couple times but now it looks like I can click on just the mouth so I'm gonna delete the mouth <gasps> she has no mouth now I could go in and draw my own mouth if I wanted to but I like the mouth that is right here on elf C so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna ungroup then click on the mouth but this time I'm gonna copy the mouth, then go back up to elf A and paste the mouth. So now it looks like my elf is smiling instead of kind of frowning. So now I have a smiley standing elf and a smiley waving elf. So that could come in handy. See, the face doesn't change. And then I have this cute little laughing elf. And then I have a sad elf. And then I have an angry elf. You can go ahead and play with the face and make different expressions if you would like by playing with the eyebrows, by playing with the kinds of eyes, by copying the mouth and making it talk. So if I wanted to get a talking version of my elf, what I could do is duplicate. So we have elf A and elf A2. Notice it's exactly the same. But I'm going to go in and take this mouth here that's open. Again, I'm going to ungroup everything. I have to make sure I get the whole mouth. Whoops, I got the whole, I got the face. Didn't want to do that. It looks like I may have ungrouped too much. So that's okay. We can click undo. There we go. Totally undone. So click on it again. Hit ungroup. See if I can click the mouse. Nope, too much. Ungroup. See if I can get the mouth. Nope, too much. Ungroup. Now I get just the mouth, that's perfect. So sometimes you have to go back and forth between ungroup and group in order to get just the mouth. So I'm gonna copy the mouth by hitting copy. 
Then I'm going to go to elf A2. I'm going to delete this smile because we already had that ungrouped and hit paste. And now it looks like I have a talking elf. So she opens and closes her mouth. So that's great. So maybe we want one more sprite for our card. So I'm going to search for one more sprite. And I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, I think there's a penguin. There he is. Which one? This one or this one? I think I like the cartoony one. I'm going to go with the cartoony one. Well, he's tremendously large. So I'm going to go to events, go to when, green flag clicked, and then I need to shrink my penguin down by going to looks, set size to, and I think I'm going to do 30%. And let's see how that works. That looks pretty good. A little penguin. If you want to make him a little bit bigger, you can make him a little bit bigger. So now I have almost my whole stage set. Now I'm going to add in some letters to spell something out. Now you could spell whatever you want, but I'm going to go here and look at my sprite and search and search for letters, which are down here. And now I can write out whatever I want and just do it letter by letter. So I can keep adding. Whoops. I want to do the happy. I think I want happy. I think there's lowercase down here too, different fonts, all kinds of different things. So H. Oh, I got H. Let's delete that one. So I'm going to go in and spell something, and then I have my card set up. So let's say I went through and spelled everything, and I wanted to go ahead and share my card. This is something we should talk about. In order to share my card, I have to first give it a title. Happy Winter. And then I just have to click the Share button. And now it's shared. So anytime I change it, it will now be updated for whoever I send it to. And I can share it with friends and family. It'll take me to this front page. I still have to finish in some letters. And I can click on copy link. And now I can copy this link and email it to whatever family member I would like to email it to. So we have a very simple basic card right now that we can share. Uh, I didn't write much letters, but you could go ahead and write in more letters. The next step is going to be to add some animation to our card. So let's take a look at that. So you can see I have now finished my happy winter. And if you like it, that's great. If you think it's a little bit too big, we can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller if we choose. So I'm going to go to the C inside and I would have to choose each letter. And I think I can make this a little bit smaller just so I can do this better. There we go. I would choose each letter like the H and I would do like we did before. Events, looks, set size. So I'm going to choose a size. So maybe 70%. Let's see how that looks. That seems a little bit better. Now I want to do that with all the letters. So what I can do is I can copy this code over. Let me shrink it a little bit because that makes it easier. And you copy it over to the letter. You see how it shakes a little bit and then you drop it. So I'm going to do that with all the letters. So they're all the same size. And then what I'm probably going to have to do is reposition things a little bit. When I'm all done, oh, it looks like I need the Y still and the R didn't get it. There we go. So now I have to reposition things a little bit and make sure everything looks neat. Much better. 
So now it is time to go ahead and animate some things. Well, let's start with maybe our letters. So if I go to the H and look at its costumes, I can see it as one costume, but then I also have this lovely thing down here. It says convert to bitmap. So I can then treat this again like a vector graphic, and I can go ahead and change the color if I want and make them any different color I want. I can um, change the, the shadow if I want. So I can do all kinds of things, but let's say I just wanted to change the color. And let's say I wanted to do, I don't know. Um, let's brighten this up a little. Oh, that's the background. I want to do this. Let's say I want to do a nice green. Like that. Now you see the fill here, it has a color 34, saturation 100 and brightness 82. But what I could do is if I wanted to copy this to the different letters, like I wanted to say, put it on this P, notice it saves the color for me. So I wanna do all the letters that I wanna be that color first. So I want to go here and I could use this little tool right here. Let me go back. I lost my color. So hit my little sample, click on that, then click on the P. And then I just want to click on this right here. And it, there it goes. It changes to the color. And then the Y I think I want to do. I'm just moving the mouse over to the color and it changes it for me. And then I think I want to do the I. And then I think I want to do the T. And I think I want to do the R. That's pretty good. And now I want to go back and do the A, but I want to change it to maybe a nice red. There we go. And I want to do the P. And then the W and then the N, and then the T. Oh, not the T, the E, haha. <laughs> there we go, and now we have it all. Happy winter, all in alternating colors. So now let's see what else we can do. If we go to code, and I'm gonna start with the H, because it is a um, vector graphic, we can go ahead and add in effects to it. So I could actually, in code, change the color, but I could also add in some special effects. So maybe I want to pixelate it. And I'm gonna put that on when green flag clicked. And you can see when I hit the green flag, maybe that wasn't enough, maybe a hundred. Oh, it's saving it. There we go. Oh, you see how pixelated it got? The beauty is if I want to set it back to zero, I just set it back to zero and it's all unpixelated. So that's one of the things I can do. But I think I might have it do that with a change feature and just have it do it by, with a loop. So instead of set color effect, I'm going to do change color effect and I'm going to put in a little loop here And how about, I just do it 10 times. And I'm gonna put a loop within a loop. So repeat this 10 times and I forever loop. Change the effect by 25. I'm gonna say change the effect by five. And then I'm gonna have it set the color effect back to zero, but we don't want the color effect. We want the pixelate effect. Now you can do the colored effect too, using the same code, but watch what happens. You can see it looks like the H is kind of blurring in and out. I think that's pretty cool. Now you could do other effects. If you do want it to, you could do a fish eye. We can see the H is making all kinds of fish eyes at us. We could do a whirl. 
And they just get in this little dance to it. Oh, I kind of like the whirl. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add the whirl and I want to add it to all the green letters. So again, I'm going to shrink this code down a little bit. I'm going to copy it to the P. I want to copy it to the Y. And then I'm going to copy it to the I. And then the T. And then the R. So let's see if I got everything. I'm going to hit green flag. Oh, looks like they're all dancing. Okay, now I'm going to do the H and do a different, not the H, the A and do a different effect, but it's the same code. So I'm just going to copy it to the A. But on the A, instead of doing a whirl, how about let's try a mosaic and see what that looks like. Oh, that's kind of fun. But maybe by one. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to drag this into the P. Oops, too big. I got to make it smaller so I can drag it. I'm just clicking the minus sign here, dragging this over to the P, then the W, then the N, then the E. So let's see if I got this right. Oh, look at that. So everything's wiggly and animated. That's really fun. Okay. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. So we can see we now have our animated Happy Winter. The next thing I'd like to do is do some animation on our little elf here to make it look like the elf is talking and saying Happy Winter. So we're gonna do another little loop. Control. And we wanna make it repeat forever when green flag clicked. And what we want to do is we want to change the elf's costume. So we're going to switch the costume and then we're going to wait. And I think we only need to wait like 0.25 of a second. And then we need to switch the costume again, but we got to see which costumes to switch to. So let's look. If we look at our elf's costumes, we can see that elf a has a closed mouth and elf A2 has an open mouth. If we switch back and forth between those two, it's gonna look like the elf is talking. So we want elf A and elf A2. And we wanna put that in a loop. And we can do a forever loop because it's just gonna keep saying it over and over again because it's a card, right? That's what animated cards do. And we hit green flag. And look, now he's talking, but maybe too fast. So let's change this to 0.5. There he goes. He's talking and saying, happy winter. Look at that. And in fact, we can actually get our character to say, happy winter. And again, we want to do this on another event because we don't, we want all these events to happen at the same time. So say, Happy winter to all. Love our innovation class. And we want to say it for a little while. We don't want to just say it for like a second. We want to make it go for a little while. So right now it says two seconds. Let's say for a full minute. So that would be 60 seconds. There we go. Love it. So now our little character's talking here. Now let's look at our penguin and see what costumes our penguin has and see if we can animate our costume a little bit, our penguin a little bit. Oh, the penguin does the same kind of thing. The penguin can talk too. So we could use the same code on the penguin. So I'm gonna go back to my elf and look at my elf costume, my elf code. And we're gonna drag this code right here to our penguin. So I'm gonna make it smaller a little bit. Whoops, I lost my green flag clicked. There we go, make it smaller. So I can drag it onto my penguin. There we go. And now my penguin has the same code, make that smaller, a little big. But instead of elf A and elf B, that would be silly. 
we want to switch to penguin A and penguin B. There we go. And we should probably make our penguin say something too. So when green flag clicked, let's see. Hope you have a fun time. And we're going to do that for 60 seconds, right? Look at that. Now, we could do one last thing if we would like. We can make our trees dance a little bit. So we click on our tree. I think I have to make this a little bit smaller so I can see what's going on. Click on my tree here and go to my code. And what I want to do is again, when green flag clicked, I want to do something where I change the looks again. So I'm going to do maybe set a color effect. Let's see how that works. Oh, look, the tree changed color. So how about a, tr a color changing tree? Now that's the same code that we used for the letters, right? So we're going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to copy this code that we had before. Forever, repeat, change, whirl. We're going to change the effect to color. I'm going to put that on Sprite 1 and 2. I think I'm going to make them do the same thing. So onto both trees. So both trees now have this and I'm going to change this to color. And let's see, let me go to this one, change this one to color, but maybe I'm going to set this to like a seven. So it's a little bit different. So they're not exactly the same color. Let's see. So they're pretty close. So maybe I want to change this to a 20 and see how that works. 20 is pretty good. Maybe I'll make this a 35. There we go. So now I have blinking letters and we have the whole card dancing. And again, if you want to share it, you have to make sure that you have clicked the shared link and then you can do it from your project page, see project page and copy the link at the bottom. Copy the link copy the link, and share it with your family. I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye for now. Ho, ho, ho!